Hello and welcome to this review of my Ergodex DX1. Yes, this is that thing I teased recently. I saw it on eBay last year and I knew immediately that this was going to make a special video. And here it is. It cost me $80 and it appears to be completely unused. I can't recall if the listing mentioned that it was new old stock or not, but it seems like it's just been sitting in someone's basement. Now, you may be wondering how old this thing is, as, let's be honest, this is the sort of crazy keyboard that's rather hard to date. And indeed, I don't know for sure, but it does mention that it's compatible with Windows 2000 and XP, so I'm guessing early 2000s. If the serial number is anything to go by, it may be 2006, which would make sense because that's pre-Vista, just. The idea behind it is that you have this box of little key modules that you can stick on this proto-tablet-like surface thingy and program keys or macros in it using the enclosed software package, which is stored on this circular device called a compact disk, which, for my younger viewers, is a 700 megabyte storage medium developed around the time your parents were born. Unfortunately, as you may have guessed already, it's not so easy to get working on a 64-bit Windows 10 machine. The software refuses to properly install and I can't seem to work around it. Now, somewhat surprisingly for such an obscure peripheral product, one or two modern front ends have been developed for it by users, because the company that made it apparently couldn't be bothered to update their drivers. However, while these do install and start up properly, the keyboard itself doesn't appear to give a shit and just flat out ignores everything send its way. Even on an old Windows XP rig, I couldn't get the software to install properly or any of the front ends to talk to the keyboard, so my diagnosis is that it's fucked. Which is kind of a shame as I'd have liked to show it in action. This is a shot taken from the manual that shows what the software looks like, which I guess is about as close as I'm going to get with this thing. Now, in order to fix the switches to the surface to make sure they didn't move around or just fall off, they coated the rear of the modules with an adhesive layer, which in turn is protected with a piece of foil for when not in use. You just stick them on, like so, and they definitely stick on cleanly. It is possible to cleanly remove them again by twisting, like this, so that you can move them again multiple times. They leave no residue. Next, to mark them with what you actually programmed into them, it comes with two sheets of stickers, one with pre-printed legends on transparent backings, they're not brown, that's just a sheet, and one with blank white stickers, which is the one I used to make the trailer. Apart from my usage, the sheets were pretty much completely untouched, hence why I suspect it's never been used. Now, apart from the pre-printed sheet containing obvious things like letters and numbers, symbols, etc., it also includes a whole bunch of smileys, guns, movement icons, card suits, chess icons, and even a nitrogen dioxide sticker, which really makes me wonder what they thought people would be getting up to with this contraption. It's really weird, it's like staring at the Wingdings alphabet or something. Now, on paper, and perhaps on video, this seems like a pretty cool idea, until you actually get your hands on it and or stop to think about it for a few seconds, because even though I haven't even used it, I can see many, many problems with this. First of all, the actual premise of the Ergodex might at first appear to be a repositionable keyboard, for ergonomic purposes presumably, given the name, which should already set some alarm bells off, but you know, it sounds quirky but fun. But this is somewhat defeated when you realize that the keyboard only comes with 25 switch modules, which isn't enough to even make up the alphabet, let alone numbers, modifiers, function keys, a space bar, etc. So right from the start, it doesn't even have the capability of typing on it. In fact, I'm not really sure why they even bothered adding letter stickers to the sticker sheet. As you can see on the box, there was an option for an extra 25 key modules, as well as one for additional key labels. God knows what rubbish is on that if the base sheet already has smileys, crossbows, axes and mp40s on it. But this wasn't the default configuration, obviously, which means it was never designed to type even just the alphabet. And really, even with 50 modules, you still don't have enough even for a basic 60% keyboard. Ergo, it's only almost an almost a keyboard. So I guess the only way this makes sense is as a macro pad, which is something I'm quite into as long-term viewers will know, I love macro keys. But even then, from my experience with macro pads, this would make little to no sense. Sure, 25 keys is not bad for a macro pad, but what doesn't make sense in this context is the repositionability. I simply don't see how this would add anything to it. In fact, for macro pads in particular, compactness is a big virtue. Wait. 
Example, here I have my two ducky pads, my trusty focus micro pad and my generation numpad. That's a lot of keys, General. But the combined size of all of these is still smaller than the Ergo Dex. Look at this. And that's a problem because all the space taken up by this micro pad is space not spent on your actual keyboard, which of course also has a million billion keys on it. Size wise, it's 28 by 23 and a half centimeters, or in imperial units, 12.57 fingers, 792 points, 15,840 twips, 1.83 shaftments, 0.00917 Ramsden's chains, 0.0139 Gunter's chains, or if you prefer a different Paleolithic unit, here's a conversion chart. So as a macro pad, this really shouldn't even work in theory, and as a keyboard, it's simply insufficient. And although I could get into the repositionability from a convenience perspective, this wasn't the aim, because as the name states, it's all in the name of ergonomics, which even the designers apparently believed in so little that they didn't even bother developing it at all, instead just leaving it all to you. But there's more, because we haven't even looked at the switches yet. Now, personally, I like really, really clicky ultra tactile switches for my macro pads. Mm, yeah. The reason is that you don't type on them normally because they're not directly in front of you, they're off to the side somewhere. So hitting them is a bit more awkward, and as a result, I think it's nice to get the absolute maximum possible amount of feedback from them. The switches in this, however, are based on rubber domes. Well, buckling rubber sleeves to be exact. Someone on Desk Authority actually did a teardown on them, and you can see the inside of the switches here. As it turns out, there are as little as four parts per switch, which is somewhat surprising for such a seemingly intricate device. However, this does mean that this is basically a rubber dome keyboard, and that you can subsequently kiss your tactility spoiled, typing feedback craving, high quality expecting ass goodbye. The feel is extremely mushy, spongy, even gooey, and quite frankly, it's pretty... HIDEOUS! Moreover, it's not even smooth. Some modules bind so badly that they stick in the downward position with every single key press, like this one, which means that you need to pry the slider back up manually, which is fiddlier than it looks. So apart from being unsuitably large for a macro pad and unusably under-equipped for a keyboard, it also has a key feel coming straight from Satan's rectum, which makes you wonder why those dedicated few actually bother to write new drivers for it in the first place, considering it doesn't seem fit to serve any purpose at all other than for making trailer videos. The build is all plastic, it weighs 820 grams or 7.23 cheeseburgers in imperial units. It does feel rather dense to be honest, so not too fragile. And it comes with a USB cable, which is nice, but they put such a giant ferrite core on it and such a short piece of wiring after it that it'll pull quite heavily on your USB port, which can't be a good thing. The ferrite core itself weighs as much as 119 grams, which is actually pretty much the same weight as a cheeseburger. One thing I do find highly intriguing is how the keyboard registers the key presses, or even knows what key it is that's being pressed. I'm guessing it's some sort of capacitive assembly, but I'm really not sure. To deepen the mystery, apparently it only works if you have this plastic cover on it. If you take it off, it won't work anymore. Also, the modules need to be completely within the boundaries of this magic area of enchantment plus one, or it won't work either. Well, it doesn't work at all as it transpires, but it won't work even when it does under those circumstances. So, apart from failing to work in practice, in principle and on paper, it's a cool little gadget. It's just a shame that it's not actually good for anything. Of course, I could have already spotted that because it has Ergo in its name. But even when they don't make Ergo stuff look like half a diaper or a Picassonian nightmare and instead leave it to you to do all the ergonomic thinking for them, it still fails to do anything. Maybe if they had made it the size of the box the keys came in and left the actual keyboard out, it'd work as a macro pad, or if they had included 101 modules, it'd show some promise as a keyboard, but right now it just looks like a chicken milkshake, off-putting and pointless. In fact, I would say it now leaves me indifferent to the point of aversion. It is a Mondrianic abomination, Jesus coke-sniffing Christ. That's it for this review, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and following is a typing demonstration of me fake typing some random non-letters on this grey-blue boiled arse turd.